Welcome to the latest episode of SVG Rewind, the series where we here at Sports Video Group take you behind the scenes and reflect back on some of the biggest, more interesting live sports productions that we've seen across the industry today. We have a really fun one to talk about with you today. We're heading on down to College Station, Texas, and catching up with our friends at Texas A&M and 12th Man Productions. If you didn't see it, they did a really cool behind the broadcast version of a live baseball game that aired on SEC Network Plus. We're going to take a look at that production with two gentlemen who were instrumental in it from Texas A&M Athletics. We're joined by Buddy Kimberlin. He's their assistant athletic director for 12th Band Productions. And Justin Argo is director of broadcasts. Gentlemen, thanks so much for taking a few minutes. Uh, Great to catch up with you. Love talking to you guys. Uh, How's everything going? And congrats on this broadcast. Yeah, things are going well here in College Station. Just finishing up a uh, a busy time of the year uh, with college sports, but uh, things are going well. Yeah, I, yeah I, thanks for having us. Of course, yeah. I, I admire the heck out of anyone who's willing to do something cool, original, and different, especially when they're as busy as you guys are. <laughs> I mean, it's very easy to look at the hundreds of events that you have to put on every year and it turns into a checklist and you do it, you do it, you do it, you do it, and you finish it, you get through the day. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You got to get it done. But the fact that you guys took some time to do something unique and pretty cool on a baseball broadcast, you had a a baseball game that you then also had a broadcast of that kind of took you inside the truck. You heard the producer, you heard the director, you got to showcase all the different various positions. Um, this is uh, something we've seen in the industry before. I know some RSNs have done it, done it on major league baseball broadcasts in the past. You don't see it a lot, but we have seen it. So why was a behind the scenes presentation of one of your baseball broadcasts? And maybe buddy, we'll start with you on this. Uh, why was that something that you wanted to do? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Justin had kind of come come to me with the idea, um, you know, in the, over the last year, like, hey, this would be a really cool thing to do. You know, um, something that be, would kind of show off our students. We have a huge student pool uh, with a ton of talented students that are, you know, doing this as a student job and hopefully trying to do this as a career uh, when they graduate. And, you know, it was just thought like this would be a good opportunity to give them a chance to show off what they do and also give 12th man productions the chance to show off, you know, what our facility looks like, what we do. We have all these A&M fans, you know, almost 70,000 students uh, at our school at this point, tons of people watch these broadcasts of these games, but they don't have any idea that it's all done from Kyle field. They don't have any idea that, you know, it takes 30 people to run a big screen in a broadcast uh, for a baseball or softball or basketball game. So, it was just a good opportunity for us to maybe kind of show off a different view of that. And you kind of talk about doing something different outside of the box. Um, and when you do it, you know, that was kind of a thing that was interesting. Like, Hey, let's do it. When this is the busiest time of the year is February because basketball's going men's and women's baseball and softball start. We have a ton of broadcasts, but it was almost kind of like a carrot at the end of the month. To, we're going to do it hard and we're going to do it well for this entire month. And at the end of the month, we're going to try to do it in a different way. And I think everybody kind of got excited about the opportunity to do it, do something different. Cool, cool. Yeah, Justin, since it sounds like you were the one who ran it up the flagpole, if you will, um, what was your motivation behind it? Did you see a broadcast that you really liked? Did it just kind of fit the culture of the program at the given moment? Uh, what what made you want to do this? Yeah, to kind of follow up with what Buddy just said, uh, we were just kind of looking for ways to expose and get exposure for 12 Man Productions <laughs> with um, throughout the university, the athletic department, and, you know, just publicly, um, you know, in this industry. And um, to answer your question, I, I, when I worked for the, I worked for Fox Sports Net, uh, Rocky Mountain, and about 10 years ago, when I was in Denver, we did something similar with the Rockies. And that was when I first got into the industry. And um, I remember thinking it was so cool the way we did it. And it was mainly back when we did it, then it was very sideline reporter hosted. Mm-hmm. Um, where she kind of it was Alana Rizzo actually she went around and she she went around and uh interviewed different people at different spots and I remember thinking it was really cool and uh now that we've settled in here pretty good at 12th Man Productions it was like what's can we do something similar like this and maybe change it up a little bit where um we don't have a sideline reporter um and and what's a way we can kind of tell these stories and set this up and have a format where it's we're, we're not taking the viewer away from the game it's kind of just giving you another viewpoint of the game to kind of help elevate that story and kind of expose what we do at 12 man productions. 
Yeah, it, it, having watched some of the broadcasts, you guys did do a really good balance of that. Of like, it didn't, uh, you know, the the game was still, you know, the primary centerpiece of everything. And I'm, buddy, I'm kind of curious from your perspective because mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes I have to take myself out of it because obviously. I could watch you guys do this all day. If every baseball broadcast you did was a behind the scenes broadcast, I'd watch every I'd watch every night. But that's because I'm a nerd who's really into this stuff. Do you find that general AM fans found a broadcast like this captivating? I think they did. Um, I mean, obviously we we try to make it pretty interactive. Um, so mm-hmm. we were, you know, on social media as well and kind of giving, you know, give us ask us questions while we're going. Um, we'll we'll pop them right into the show. We'll talk about stuff that you guys bring up. And so we, you know, we have a lot, we had a lot of positive feedback. We had a little bit of negative because there's some diehard baseball fans. Like I want to watch the game. This is my team. And we understand right. that we, we completely sure. get it. That's kind of why we pinpointed the game that we did. We wanted to do it earlier in the season. We wanted mm-hmm. to do a Tuesday night game, you know, a game that, you know, hopefully wasn't going to come down to the eighth and ninth inning where the right. game really mattered. And luckily it didn't because the game we did, the score was 23 to nothing. So I think we picked a good, <laughs> a really good game to show off, uh, you know, baseball in a different light. And I think that doing that early on, I mean, obviously we're not going to do that when we start playing SEC baseball and it's a, you know, top 10 matchup that that, sure. that doesn't feel like the time to do it. Um, but I think Tuesday night there was a great chance to do that. And we still tried to make it a point of, Hey, we're going to show you a little something from inning to inning, but we're also going to show you the game. We're never going to, we're not going to miss pitches. Um, and mm-hmm. we, we didn't do very much of that. I think we maybe missed a couple. But, you know, for the most part, we didn't miss pitches. We're showing you what's happening, but then we're showing it to you from a different angle that you might not have seen normally. Okay. Well, we'd love to get into the nitty gritty of how y'all produced this. I mean, for those people in the audience who maybe don't know, uh, baseball in particular, you guys do a lot of things well at 12th Man Productions. You do baseball extremely well. Not to toot our own horn here, but you guys have won multiple college sports media awards at the SVG College Summit for your baseball broadcasts. Uh, you know, if there's a walk-off at a Texas a and baseball game, chances are it's going to be in the running for an award because uh, you guys do such a good job. So what did it take to do this and feel free to get into the nitty gritty and maybe just, uh, Justin, we'll start with you on this. Did this require, it, it almost feels like it was a little inception. Like you got like the control room covering the control room and like, it could just keep going if you wanted it to. Uh, so yeah. what, what did you have to do? Did you have a completely doubled crew? Was it a smaller crew and another smaller control room? What did you have to do to produce the purely the behind the scenes portion of this broadcast? Not so much the game itself. So what I really wanted to do uh, was to have, uh, we're, we're fortunate enough to have three bigger control rooms of 12 man productions and a smaller one that we use a lot for big screen shows. So we knew by doing this, we were going to be using three control rooms. We were going to be doing one for the normal broadcast. I was using another control room to be like a behind the scenes of that broadcast. And then we had the big screen show going on at the same time. Um, and, and I think that was our goal is to not really take away from what they were doing in the room next door. Like I wanted it to seem as natural of like they're doing a broadcast. So like in a base hit happens, this is what a replay sequence looks like. This is the way the director is cutting. And we use the other control room to kind of take their output of their control room as one source. And then we could two box it and show what the camera is doing behind it. Um, we had a spy camera in there that was kind of a cool angle of the control room. And we also had a handheld that was connected to the switcher in the other control room that we could kind of show what they were looking at actually on their program feed. So um, I, we wanted the technical director too in the, the main control room to not get confused of which source am I taking? Am I taking the behind the scenes camera or, you know, so it kind of simplified it a little bit to try to really make the control room next door that was doing the broadcast seemed like a normal broadcast. So buddy, to get into the real nitty gritty, did that require any complex, you know, wiring or connecting of the rooms or anything like that? Or was it, was it pretty straightforward for you guys? No, it really wasn't anything out of the, out of, you know, the complete or unordinary. We had Mm -hmm. the uh, main control room, like Justin said, where we had that spy camera set up. That was just an extra thing that we don't normally have in there. So we did run, um, you know, run some uh, wiring for that um, to get that set up. And then we have a control, we, uh, we have a camera, we have a studio next to where our control rooms are. So we also do have camera uh, connectivity, you know, right there uh, on, on. So we just literally were able to bring that right down the hall um, to where our control rooms are. So we obviously don't have that normal camera in there, but that's really the only thing because our control rooms all um, are changing out and doing different sports every day. That's pretty quick 
to be able to flip around and bring, uh, you know, bring a program from one control room into another control room and go from there. So there was really only, I guess there was what three, there was three people in the, in the second control room. Hmm. Um, so Justin yeah. was kind of direct. He was the baseball broadcast was happening in control room one as usual um, mm-hmm. in the control room two. Uh, just, Justin was TDing and also, you know, a, a combo of TDing, directing and producing along with me sitting next to him, uh, kind of talking through where we're going to do next. Um, and then also run the social media. And then we had an, uh, we had an ex- extra expression op in that second control room that was kind of, uh, doing questions from the audience, um, kind of being able to add an extra thing on top of what the normal expression operator was doing, which was normal baseball. Got it. Uh, yeah. And, and, and just to kind of follow that up, but we, we did a couple of things too, where, um, like that output of that other expression in our control room, we made sure the switcher next door had that output of that, uh, that yeah. CG in that channel. So the expression up and the AP next door, didn't have to worry about looking at social media and typing up a tweet. It was just like, Hey, it's good. We've checked it. It's in, uh, you know, the other uh, graphics channel. Um, and we also audio wise, on our board, uh, you know, took the producer and director's audio in there, which we normally don't have. And we wanted to have those separate and not as one channel, just so it wouldn't be too overwhelming to the viewer. Although later on at the end of the game, we did track both at the same time with the announcers and it was uh, a little chaotic, uh, organized chaos, you know, but um, Mm -hmm. we wanted it to be where we could control it a little bit that way where, you know, you could hear, if you just wanted to focus on the producer, you could hear them talking to the announcers and stuff like that. Okay. When you reflect on it now, uh, is there a moment that sticks out to you that really you feel like really nailed it, really encapsulates what this whole thing was about? Maybe Justin, we'll start with you on that one. Um, I really enjoyed uh, just kind of being the fly in the wall and having the handheld behind the director, Thomas, <laughs> and producer, Alyssa, uh, Thomas Burns and Alyssa Killebrew. It, 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 was, it was fun just to kind of see them work during the action. And, and I think a lot of times when I was directing next door, I chose to take it full from the handheld instead of the two box, because it just, it kind of was more immersive for the viewer, I think, to see all the, the wall and like what, where they were cutting. And you could actually see the program output on their monitor wall. And so when we talked earlier about, yeah, we missed a couple of pitches, but when we did that, we tried to do it when they we were like in that handheld behind them. So the viewers still saw the pitch and Mm -hmm. Aggies were still winning at the time, like 15 to nothing or whatever. So Mm -hmm. they were still seeing the pitch, but it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't from the normal program output. It was from behind them and kind of seeing what they were doing. And uh, when you track their mic and stuff, it really opens up uh, and exposes the talent that we have and what they're doing and what the students are doing. And I think it's been cool hearing from, uh, you know, Alyssa said the other day that she was, uh, that's something this past weekend and someone was like, Hey, I saw you on TV last week with the Aggies. You're that producer. And yeah, nice. that, that was kind of cool. So we wanted to give them some, uh, a shout out. And I know the students really enjoyed it too. Just having their names on the broadcast. Take five. Yeah. Ready for take four. T burns. T burn. Ready to take two. It's drilled to left. That's going to play five. a few more Aggies. Take five. Two Ready two. Home, take two. And they will hold. Ready five. Lavalette at third base. Ready one. Take one. Ready three. Take three. Austin Bose. The guy's hitting under 100, and he's the 12th man. Ready two. He needs a Ready four. Take four. Ready replay X. And he was and fired up backs. to finally roll get that X. done. You can see the fourth set hanging blue. curveball. This at bat. And Tattooed blue one is all foul. Blue. Keeps that Runner on second fire. Set red. And he needed that. Well, red is all red track. Let me get to the base here, Flowers. He gets on second base after this double and just kind of takes a second set to blue and soak blue is all in blue. it. As he was set quite X fired up and to Rolex is all X. finally have a Ready, quick big out to impact four. on this offense. There you go. There's and the shot. And out to four. Very fired up. We handpicked all those students for that show. Um, we're all our highest performing students and ones that have done – countless national broadcasts for us on, on the past couple of years. And some maybe haven't been on that camera in two years, but they did it originally and we brought them back just to kind of give them a shout out and stuff. So I, I think just, we just had fun with it. And, and there were lots of laughs and smiles as we did it. So it was a, it was a good way to kind of end the crazy month of February. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, we'd definitely love to reflect more on the, and ask you guys more about the student staff, but buddy, uh, a specific moment from the broadcast other than that, that maybe stood out to you. Yeah. 
I don't know if there was one specific thing. I think there, yeah. it was fun to see, uh, you know, there's a couple of pieces that we cut that we put in Twitter that was just like, all right, we're, we're listening to the director and then something big happens. And I felt like that happened a couple of times. We were listening in with the producer and somebody hit, you know, a grand slam. Mm. And so we were able to, you know, listen to the producer, talk us all the way through the replays, um, figuring out, no, bring that one back. No, hey, well, it's got it in red. No, let's pull it up in blue. Bring, you know, just like we hear normally that fans didn't get to hear. And I think that that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize is how much conversation, how much communication there are mm-hmm. behind the scenes to get you those views that you're watching, you know, while you're just sitting quiet on your couch watching the game. So I think that was just to give that opportunity for fans to see that. I know that I got a lot of feedback from you know, friends, family, and, you know, and even some, a couple of people that I didn't know that just sent emails and they were like, I had no idea that there was, that's how TV works, you know? So I think just to give that to a few people that don't have, you know, that don't do this for a living like we do, that was, that's a cool moment. Touch them all and clear them all. Austin Most. Stand by X. We'll go X, side swing blue, full speed red. Look at Alyssa X. getting to work Replay back X. there and Boast Replay doing his dance. X. Excited to be back Blue's on track next. as Austin Boast. Just tees off on that sinker left up. You can see that Red's view right next, there. Tracking red, Pull full side's speed. a dangerous place to pitch Boast. Three and you've knocks got him. on the day Ooh, I, for the 12th Why, man. why? Replay why? Do we have bench? He's going to get back why? on track in a hurry this game. Or do we have dugout? Doug- Ooh, I like blue. Roll back blue. Blue. We're going to see blue box. here. Wow, great guys, good job. There we go. Very nice. Well done, Alyssa. Very nice, that was cool to see. She's looking at different shots, different slow-mos that these cameras are getting, maybe angles of the crowd, angles of the teammates in the dugout. So she's making that call for us to give y'all the the best view of actually what's going on. Now, I know for a lot of people who work in college that this is the hardest part. The technology has actually gotten to the point where it, it, you can figure it out. And, uh, you know, if you got to control me, make it work, not to say that it doesn't come without some challenges and some hiccups, but maintaining, recruiting, training and trusting students across the board is maybe one of the challenge, most challenging parts of this job. So how do you guys go about doing it? How do you recruit, train? And did you run into any significant gaps when you might not have been able to have students on campus during COVID? Did that leave a little bit of a hole? Are you recovering from that? H- how do you guys approach maintaining that very big student staff that you have? Sure. I'll start, Justin, and then you can you can pop in from there. So at 12 Member Productions, they, we've had student workers for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, that started back in, I think, 2004 is about when they uh, started hiring students. They named you know the video area 12 Man Productions. Um, and started hiring students to do to do uh, work, kind of modeled after, um, I, I believe, Nebraska, where where mm-hmm. a lot of the people that kind of started it came from. Um, and so that was kind of uh, that's I kind of always been the mantra here is that students can get it done, um, and then just hiring those students. I think we've learned a lot over the over the years of how that works, and you know you can find people. Um, you know, in today's world, there's a lot of high schools that do this, um, that do some broadcasts of Texas a- Texas football games. Mm-hmm. high school football um, and have broadcast teams. And so we get students from there. Um, we, we try to, but we also get a lot of students that maybe haven't done a lot of TV, but they know sports. And I think that that's one thing that we learned over time that is really valuable and you can't, it's almost easier to teach sports. I mean, I'm sorry, easier to teach broadcast to somebody right. that knows sports as opposed to teach sports to someone that knows broadcast, because if mm-hmm. you don't know the rules of the game, if you don't know where the shortstop stands, it's really hard to teach that in two weeks, the the ins and outs of a baseball game. But as if you played high school baseball and you watched baseball on TV your whole life, you may not know how to run all these positions, but you know what mm-hmm. you would want to see again if you were watching the game. So you know what you should you should replay, right? And then we yep. can teach you the machines. We can teach you if you're willing to learn. That is almost easier to teach to someone that knows – what the end goal is and that's to put a TV broadcast together is like that you would be happy to watch if you were as a fan, if it was your team, you know, playing. So I think that that's something that we've really learned. Now we do a big hire group uh, about once a year um, and sometimes twice depends on, you know, our unit and our goal is we don't really want to have a ton of a single year, right? So we don't want to have 50 seniors 
that would be awesome for that one year. But the next year would be such a disaster that we've got to kind of yeah. try to keep everybody in a rotation, just like a team, right? Just like mm -hmm. a, if we're basically like coaches for a really big team and we try to keep our units to where, hey, we've got a bunch of young people that we're going to kind of train and they're kind of watching and waiting and then they're going to get their opportunity when the seniors graduate and go take a new job. So I think that's the two biggest things probably for us that we've kind of learned over time is to not not go all in on a certain year to where, you know, where you have too much senior leadership because it yeah. has hurt you so much the next year and to make sure that you can, you want people that know the equipment, you want people that are creative, but you also want people for the most part that know sports or at least have a specific sport that they know well, because they're going to really be able to help you. If they played volleyball in high school, they're going to be really good come volleyball season to be your APs, to be your, you know, your replay operators, all that kind of stuff come volleyball season. Yeah, for, for sure. Uh, Buddy explained it great. I, I, I think as we transition to, if, if you're a sports fan and you're, and you're watching, like, we're, you know, this is a baseball broadcast. Uh, we have a lot of Astros and Rangers fans, you know, being in Texas. And if they're going home and watching those broadcasts, they know when a home run is hit, how that camera is kind of pushing into the ball going over the outfield because they've seen it. So we can explain and give them some specifics, but for the most part, they've been watching it most of their life and, and they're really into it and they're going to go home and watch it for fun too. So during their downtime, they're also kind of doing their homework by watching their sports and seeing what other people are doing. And, and as they work here, they start looking at broadcasts differently as a fan and seeing like, Hey, I really like the way Sunday night football did this last night. Like, what if we tried something like that? Mm -hmm. And so it translates pretty well. But, you know, j just to kind of put it all together, um, it is hard working with students initially, but we try to look at it as the reward after the fact of once they get the skills and start um, executing the shows, you know, at a really high level. So I really enjoy getting those students like their first couple of shows where they're a little nervous, uh, mm -hmm. getting a little, you know, sweaty and jittery and stuff and by the by the time they graduate they're super cool under pressure giving each other fist bumps on a rollout and mm -hmm. you know j just really doing a great job and setting them up for success for opportunities when they graduate and i know that that's our favorite part as as the staffers that oversee them is seeing them kind of grow and succeed that's very cool. Uh, I want to go back to the baseball broadcast for a bit here. You guys have been really generous with your time, but before we go, obviously want to give the opportunity for those in the audience to maybe learn even some more from you. What's some advice that you would give uh, to another college athletic department that looks at what you guys did and go, that's cool. We're going to do that. Um, I, I know Justin, you alluded to the benefit of having multiple control rooms. Uh, you know, I, there's probably a lot of your SEC brethren who, if they wanted to go do this tomorrow, they probably could. Uh, and, and then maybe there's some schools that are on here that maybe are lucky to have one control room who are like, do I need to have three control rooms to pull this off? Like if you were to give advice to another athletic department that wants to go do this, uh, what would you say to them? I, I'll start it off. And I think first off is to make sure there's no surprises. So mm -hmm. I thought we did a pretty good job of we reached out to ESPN over two months ago just to kind of give sure. them a heads up like, hey, we're thinking about this. What do you think? And they had me explain it a little bit more and they were very supportive about it. And then we went to our administration and gave them a heads up. Hey, are you all cool with it? And then I went and met with our head coach, Jim Sloshnagel, and just really made sure he was on the same page too. And he was excited about it. And that was encouraging. So everybody was was kind of aware of it. And then we were able to also promote it that way too. Mm -hmm. And that, that helped with some of our viewers and interactions and stuff. But um, I think for, for those that are wanting to do this is just, just kind of have fun with it. Um, you know, like we told everybody, like t t the purpose of the show last Tuesday was to, you know, document the game, but to have fun and kind of give some exposure of what we're doing at 12 man production. So if we made a mistake, it's okay. We we're doing something a little bit different. We could kind of lap it off. Um, it was behind the scenes. And I think that's what people enjoy to see of like, what's actually raw going on, uh, you know, from what the viewer normally doesn't see. So um, we were fortunate enough to have another control room to do, um, you know, a behind of the behind the scenes, I guess. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, you, you could have done it just through one control room as well and just execute it um, just a little bit differently. Um, but I think the big thing I'll just kind of end on is, is, is we had a, 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 a Google format, basically. We made a Google doc that was a live document that had a format of all the ideas and topics and where were we going to spread them out throughout the show. And 
And I know we moved some break times around to allow things to be explained a little bit longer, but we made it a live document so we could move and change things based on when stuff happened. Like we weren't anticipating the score to be 10 to nothing in the first inning. So we <laughs> started moving things up earlier in the show to kind of help with the flows because we we wanted it to be about, um, you know, 70 percent, 60 percent of a normal baseball broadcast with that extra flavor of what's going on behind the scenes, you know, uh, for the other rest of the percentage of the show. So um, we were all on the same page, just kind of communicating with it. Okay, cool. How about you, buddy? Yeah, I think it, a good thing that Justin just brought up there is that live document really did help too with, with what the way we did it is because we were getting, you know, we were getting live questions um, from social media during the game. And so for us to be able to give good written answers for our color commentator and our, in uh, our play by play, that was a good opportunity for us to be able to kind of type those on the fly because, you know, some of the questions are, are technical, tough questions that they may not have that answer to, but we can get that to them quickly without them having to, you know, memorize it through talk back. They can actually get it, see it through the, to the, through the timeout and kind of read through that. I think that that was super helpful for a lot of us to be able to talk, have an extra form of communication, which was, you know, more of a written or, you know, digital communication as opposed to just vocal. I think that that was super helpful. I think, you know, if we did it again, we'd probably add someone else in the control room. Um, just because I think it was tough to have somebody switching that and kind of being able to keep up with the pro producer director role of it in that second control room. Um, because we were also running social media through there, which there was a lot of interactions that night through our, through our social media channels. So that was kind of, you know, we really wanted it to make like, hey, our social media respond is responding to anybody that's talking. We are trying to really, you know, use that to like, hey, we're here. We're doing this. The same people that are you're watching on TV are talking to you on social media, too. And so I think we probably would have maybe added another position there if we could do it again. But I think it turned out great the, the way we did it. I was I'm very happy with all of it. I'm happy with the extra work. And I think that going back to something we talked about earlier is doing it sometimes doing it during the busiest times makes it better. You know, originally I think we were talking about doing it at the end of February and I'll, I'll, we were like, ah, oh, yeah, this could work, but it could be cooler if we did it later when, you know, there's nothing that whole week and we can really prep. But I almost think it was for our students, it was kind of like a, you know, a carrot to the end of a really hard month where everybody had put in a ton of hours and we're working every day. And it was kind of something that they all look forward to. And I feel like when that game was over, everybody was like high fiving and it, it was kind of like a good, everybody get together like that was pretty cool. We did something different and we weren't afraid to mess it up and we didn't. And so that, mm -hmm. that helped obviously, but it was kind of a good uh, ending to, you know, one of your hardest parts. So that's all my other advice would be like, don't be afraid to do it right in the middle of everything else. Like just, <laughs> just do it because your, your, your staff will really appreciate the recon recognition of the hard work that they put in. And I think that the students really benefited that opportunity. Very cool. Well, very happy for you all with how it turned out and certainly happy for the students to get that opportunity too. So glad to hear that you guys are so pleased with how it turned out. Uh, I guess real quickly before we let you go, you got uh, obviously still got plenty of the academic year left to go. Uh, uh, any other broadcasts? I mean, one of the advantages about the new deal with the SEC network and ESPN plus is that anyone anywhere in the country can watch what you guys are doing. And I do recommend if you want to study a good college program and how they do baseball broadcasts specifically, uh, watch Texas A&M home games, uh, no doubt. Uh, anything cool you guys got coming up you want to tease? We we have, um, I think when we counted, we have 12 more uh, nationally televised broadcasts that we're doing, uh, which is one of the higher numbers we've done during the baseball and softball season. So mm -hmm. we're really looking forward to that. Uh, I know we're getting to do uh, the Texas baseball game on a Tuesday night and a and in Texas is a big rivalry game, so we're going to have some cool stuff for that that we're planning. Um, but there's some big-time SEC conference baseball and softball games coming through that uh, we're really, really going to try to maybe experiment a little bit with some different uh, equipment and try different storytelling techniques to really kind of, you know, uh, amp up those broadcasts. But uh, we, we really look forward to those. We've got – he said we have 12 more linears to go for the year. I think that – our total number for the year is 33. I think wow. that's right, Justin, 33 linear. So, I mean, that's the most we've ever done out of our facility. Um, and so I mean, I, I'm proud of that number for mm -hmm. our broadcast team. I think that being able to be asked to do that many uh, by ESPN and them having the trust that like, Hey, you guys, you guys have the people 
in place to be able to produce and direct those games at a high quality. Um, I think that that's something that, you know, we're proud of. So I think that finishing that, finishing that year off strong with those last 12 and, you know, hopefully uh, being able to even, you know, push those numbers in the future if, if ESPN will have us because that's showing that, you know, we are at that level where we can do a lot of good, a lot of good television uh, at a high, at a high quality. All right. Well, that's Buddy Kimberlin. He's assistant athletic director for 12 Man Productions. And Justin Argo is director of broadcasts. Again, be sure to check out any other work that you see from them. If it's a Texas A&M home event on ESPN Plus or on SEC Network, stop and check it out. You'll see their fantastic work and the fantastic work of their students. Uh, Gentlemen, congratulations on this particular broadcast, uh, getting this far into the season, getting through February. Uh, We really appreciate you carving out some time to uh, reflect on this with us. Thanks so much. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. All right. For more episodes of SVG Rewind, you can head on over to our on-demand video platform, SVG Play. That's at svgplay.sportsvideo.org.